Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a way that you can encode categorical values, so that's text values that have, um, have individual classes in your columns, by a method that's called target encoding, or mean encoding sometimes. This is a very common technique that's used in Kaggles, but you've got to be very careful with it, especially outside of Kaggles where you may not have that final holdout set. It's very easy to overfit with target encoding. So in this video, I am going to talk about an article that was presented that shows how to do this that I based my code on. And then I'll give you my own code that deals with um, one issue that I found in the existing code and is also better adapted to using with Kaggle. Now, since this encoding type is used just for categoricals, it's very similar to, or you would use it potentially in place of one hot encoding or other forms, other ways that you would have encoded categorical values. It can sometimes give you greater performance than one-hot encoding. And of course, if you find this kind of thing interesting, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you're notified of any additional videos that I create. Okay, before I show you my code, let me show you the article that I got a lot of the source material from. This is an article by Max Halford, I have a link to it in the description, target encoding done the right way, and I largely agree with that. This is a good approach to do it. There's a couple of bugs in the code here. That's why I kind of created my own example. I'll show you that in a second. For example, the data set that's created, A and B, A and B, C, where, where would C even come from? So let me show you how I adapted this for my own use. The function that is provided here that does the smooth target encoding is great, and I made use of this. I extended a little bit so that it works better with the actual training and submission data sets that a Kaggle typically gives you. And I also wanted to explain a little more on this, on, on the weight. Let's go ahead and take a look at my own implementation of this. Okay, now I'll show you an example of how to actually make use of that, of that function and my own modifications to it. First, I'm going to bring in pandas and numpy. I'm going to generate my data set and we'll print out the data set. I have a continuous value. We're not using the continuous value. You typically do not use target encoding with continuous values. I've seen it done. They will typically bin the continuous column, which transforms it into a categorical. So yeah, you can convert a, a continuous into a categorical and then convert that categorical into target encoding, but that's, and that can be valuable sometimes. I've seen some examples in a couple of the Kaggles where they, they do that sort of thing. I also have my two categories, category zero, category one. Now, these are types of animals. Notice the problem that's going to occur is tiger down here. There's only one tiger. It's going to lead to overfitting. You have to be very, very careful with target encoding because target encoding is making use of the Y of the output. So in a Kaggle, the downside is going to be you might set up your target encoding and introduce this new feature. You might see that feature that you created shoot to the top of feature importance. Usually I'm very worried when that happens. And you'll get this great cross-validated score too when you, when you actually generate your data and do your predictions. Then you submit it to Kaggle and it's, it's nothing. They score you on the leaderboard and you get no improvement at all. That means you've overfit. And I'll show you an example of sort of why that, why that happens. In a nutshell, category encoding is essentially what we're going to do is look at all the dogs. So we want to encode this cat zero. You can use category encoding even as a model and have its output be the actual Y hat that you're trying to predict, and I've seen that done. We're talking more in this video just about how to use it as a feature encoder. So we're going to encode category 0 and 1 using it. Essentially, you could think of it as taking all the dogs and averaging the Y, and then taking that average of Y, a group by essentially, and replacing dog with that average. 
because now what you're doing is instead of having all these dummy variables running around for dog and cat, you are going to have just, just one value. This is great if you potentially have a large number of categories. However, if you have a large number of categories, you're also increasing the, the possibility of overfitting, which we'll see why in a moment. So let's go ahead and run just the averages. So cat has an average of 0 0.2, dog has an average of 0 0.8. First of all, this is, this is a good sign that the target encoding will help you because these two are differentiated from each other. If it was saying the cat had 0 0.5 and dog had 0 0.5, then that's probably not a column that's really going to help you with target encoding or potentially contain that information, much information in general. So what you would do here is cat, since the uh, average of cat came out to 0 0.2, because there's only one cat for all those, those others that has a 1, and dog was 0 0.8, you would just replace all these cats with 0 0.2. Similarly with wolf and tiger. Now here is where the, here is where the overfitting occurs. Notice tiger is 0, 0.0 because the average or the mean of tiger is going to be 0. There's only one of them. So you are now literally encoding your target right in as a feature for, for the tigers. That's, that's potentially bad. That's how you see your, your new feature that you've created shoot to the top of the importance list and you know that you've got a problem. You've got target leakage. Now, if you're, this is where you really have to be careful with this if you're using this just for a non-Kaggle data science project. For a real-world data science project, you've got to have some sort of final holdout where you're, where you're truly evaluating the model that you fit after you did this so that that model holdout was not used to generate these averages. Or you've got to truly build feature engineering into your into your cross-validation so that you don't just do this at the beginning for your data set. You do your target encoding for your data set and then do your cross-validation. You need to make it part of your cross-validation. Now for Kaggle, you can make it part of your cross-validation so that you're truly calculating a different average for each, each fold. But, and you can do that, and that will give you the most accurate cross-validation. You can also just use the Kaggle leaderboard to do it. Now you, you risk overfitting to the leaderboard. These are all trade-offs that you need to decide when you want to actually implement this sort of thing. Normally, feature engineering is done before you do the, the folding. But since this is using the target, it really should be inside of the actual folds for the most accuracy. Now let's look at this function here. Essentially the same thing as the function provided on the on the other page that I made use of. The difference is I do pass in two data frames, and the reason I pass in two data frames is for the test and the train. This is very Kaggle specific. And I gave them more descriptive variable names. Cat name, that's the name of the category that you are trying to actually categorically encode, and then for, for target encoding, and then the, the target is your y, that's your, that's your value that you're trying to predict. And then weight is the actual weight that you want to give it. Now, what weight is for is, for example, tiger is zero because there's only one of them. The bigger the weight, the more that tiger is going to be pulled to the overall average. So the overall average, I calculate that down here. That's just the average or the mean for the entire y column uh, to the to 0 0.5, which is the, the mean for the entire y column. Now the units that the weight is in is tricky. This is because and I'm, I may make some changes um, to, to the weight as I, as I use this function further. I don't like that the, the unit of the weights is in row count. So 
as you have more rows, you need a bigger you need a bigger weight. I would prefer that to be more normalized, like something between zero and one, and that's an enhancement I might make to this to this in the future. But let's see the effect of weighting. If you do a weight of zero, so let's run this so that we actually have it. And then let's run this with a weight of zero. So if you run this with a weight of zero, this is basically going to do the same thing that we had here. So tiger, this is the same thing as just simple non-smoothed, go ahead and overfit it like we saw in the, in the first part. See, the one with tiger is, is encoding to zero. What we can now do, though, is add in a bigger weight. Let's add in a weight of 10. If we add in this weight of 10, that this is starting to converge to the 0 0.5. Maybe a weight of 10 is too much. Unfortunately, this is a hyperparameter now that you, that you have to, ma to manage. And setting in general, setting it lower will give you better scores with more overfitting, so better fake scores. Isn't that wonderful? And setting it higher will give you worse scores, but with uh, more confidence that you're not overfitting. So that's it. It's a hyperparameter. You need to you need to do some experimentation and figure out what value you're going to be most comfortable with. If we do five. Now it doesn't converge as as much. And again, the the scales for these I can't just give you a typical a typical value. It's going to it is going to be dependent on data set sizes. Okay, that's target encoding. It can be a very effective means of encoding categorical values, but be very careful of overfitting. Thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.